perfect. Alright everyone, welcome back to another episode of Up in the Air Stream. And here we are at Camp Margaritaville Port Pigeon Forge. Um, gonna pan around here. We got another rig coming in, getting parked. I'm sure he's glad that I'm recording them. And that's our setup there. We're gonna do a little bit of a walk around here at the campground. And uh, as we did last year, and as you can see, there's the building. So this is our second year here at Camp Margaritaville. Uh, this is site one two or zero one two, and we'll um, we'll call out the sites as we walk around here, also to give you a reference as we talk about different aspects of this campground. So, like I said, second year here at Camp Margaritaville. Um, this campsite opened up in February of 2022, and we are currently in July of 2023. So. This is part of the campground that we didn't really cover very good in our first video. We didn't actually come up this way very much, but this is where we're staying this time. So that's why we're starting off here instead of down by the pool. Um, so over here on the right is 016. And uh, we're it, this is currently Sunday, so there is quite a bit of folks that are coming in as a lot of folks have vacated earlier in the day as they need to be back to work on Monday. So here is 018 on the right. And so our thoughts this year on Camp Margaritaville Pigeon Forge is that they are definitely doing a great job of building on what they have here. Um, they did complete their Lazy River, which you'll see some footage of that um, earlier in the, uh, in the video, some B-roll of that. Uh, we're down here at the end of the lane and we're looking at the, um, the pavilion down here, which is a nice place for people to to meet in the morning for breakfast and also kind of walk your dog down here away from everybody else because there's a lot of a lot of grass down here uh, we've stayed here from Friday actually Thursday afternoon until uh, Monday morning tomorrow which is when we're checking out and it's been a great stay it's always a relaxing time here in the beautiful scenery the Smoky Mountains here in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. And uh, this is our view here at the end of the lane. And then panning around, there's the lodge. So the unique, plate, unique thing about this place is that, in fact, it is a RV resort and also a lodge. And they do share the amenities between both. And you can have you can have access to all of it really there's really i don't think there's any difference between staying in the lodge or the rv resort if you look down there at, uh, you'll see the lazy river that is new this year in 2023 it was being constructed in 2022 and some of my criticism of the place uh, in our last video if you look at it which will be under triad expeditions but it is it is linked to our same channel here is that basically they didn't have enough staff um, it was a little bit post covid and so that's understandable um, i think it's a lot better now i think they've uh, done a good job of getting some good staff for the facility here and uh, the place is nice and clean um, there's people to help you when you need help um, we had dinner and I'm, I'm all over the place on this but it, it's really going to be like when i think of stuff um, I'm going to tell you what my thoughts are. So we had dinner last night uh, at the bar, and the food was really good. Uh, we had the uh, fish and chips, and the fish and chips um, was like $20. Um, but I tell you what, I'd, I'd pay that at the local bar uh, for what we got, because we did get like four big, large fillets of food. 
um, and a large plate of french fries and it was good i mean i always say that i judge a place by its fish and chips especially places that claim to be an english pub and so um, i would definitely have, have put those fish and chips up against any of that so let's talk about like a couple different considerations that you do need to think about uh, when you are at the pool whether it be the lazy river or the main pool there is no coolers that are allowed to be brought in so you do need to keep that in mind um, and you do need to keep in mind that the the price of the alcohol whether it be beer whiskey or mixed drinks is is a, is priced accordingly for an rv resort or a resort i should say um, so expect that when you pay um, or you budget um, now one thing that we did we definitely did bring our our yetis in with us to keep hydrated and they don't there's no drink police that goes around and asks you you know what do you have in your yeti so that might help you plan accordingly as far as making sure to have some type of cooler or not cooler but some type of tumbler uh, that you bring into the pool area with you so you can make sure to stay hydrated um, so as we walk down through here, this is site 27 here on the left. Um, and all the sites are very similarly uh, sized as far as length. Um, I'm sure they do have some restrictions. And so when you put your vehicle length in, um, you can also, also see like per the site, that's site 29 there. Off to the right here is site 30. Um, you'll be able to see the dimensions of the site to make sure that it's going to be compatible with your rig um, but these are sort of the premium sites is that what they call them Pre it's either premium, or deluxe, premium or deluxe sites up here but you'll be able to see as you select one of these sites what they are um, and then they are a little bit tighter as far as like distance between the sites as we go down the hill so I'm not sure if we're going to make it down there or not before we run out of top things to talk about. But, uh, you know, like I said, we, we kind of covered that area a lot better than this road here last time. So if you want to see those areas, uh, definitely check out our previous video. Um, I did a pretty good walk around with all those areas as we were staying down further. This is site 38 here on the right. Um, and these sites are kind of cool because they do back up to the hill here. Um, you don't have anybody behind you. So that's kind of nice. Uh, you just have, you know, your two neighbors on each side. And then uh, they're pretty big, pretty big sites with a lots of uh, yard. That's site 40, as you can read. And then site 41 is going to be here in front of us. Um, definitely, you know, the, the facilities as far as the bathhouse, we don't utilize them, so I can't speak directly, and I wouldn't be able to film in there anyways. But they look clean. Um, and everything is nice and new so that's a good thing as far as what road this is um, that's site 3 there on the left and actually I don't see a sign now but they're normally oh uh, yeah I had problems with this last video so you can go back and see where I had a problem with uh, pronouncing the uh, Adirondack uh, way um, as soon as you come in it'll be the first right so down there is your check-in office and it's nice because you, know, you got your three lanes here to get checked in so you can kind of stage there get out um, it's this office is also staffed 24 hours a day so that's that's very handy as well um, we did get some ice you may want to you may want to buy ice before you get here not because their ice is somewhat um, overpriced um, but just because they really just sell like small bags and not the larger bags that you may need to fill your larger coolers um, so like a small bag was like four dollars for a seven pound bag um, and you know I just didn't really want to buy two of them so just keep that in mind you may want to stop at Bucky's or something on the way in and get you a couple large bags of ice uh, because it's not too far away what do you want yeah but Bucky's is like 30 minutes from here so just keep that in mind too as far as when you're planning um but yeah there's every, everybody's super nice you know here at the campground as usual so there's no exceptions there 
Um, just kind of do have to watch out a little bit because there is a lot of um, scooter traffic with folks and the speed limit here in the campground in the RV resort that is is 10 miles per hour and uh, they don't really enforce it. And I've seen that criticism for other videos out there that they really don't enforce it. There's no real security that is like a roving security so keep that in mind as well. Um, though I don't think they have any problems whatsoever with like theft or anything else. Um, you just do, you know, maybe, maybe there is a roving security and we just don't know about it. Um, but it's not very visible and if, if there is, they should make themselves more visible. But there is a lack of enforcement and some of the kids really get moving around here with the scooters. So just kind of keep that in mind as well. And then obviously you have folks that always want to uh, fly into the campground. So we're right here at the main pool. Uh, which is super nice and you have the slide they do have sort of a lifeguard on duty not really because all he's paying attention is to make sure the kids aren't going down the slide at the same time um, and then one of one of the bars that they have is directly back there in the corner of the pool area and that's actually where we had dinner last night and um, folks in there were super nice um, they had the fish and chips like like Chris was just saying and I do highly recommend that as well. We were gonna eat there again tonight, but we brought so much food with us that we're like, no, we need to cook some of this food. So we're, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go ahead and cook some food there at the camper. So moving along here, in case this is the first video that you're watching of this uh, campground and resort, um, they definitely um, decorated more even. Um, supposedly that is Jimmy Buffett's one of the recording studios which is that little airstream sitting there that he had uh, recorded some of his music in uh, which I find kind of interesting but there's a little placard there that gives you the history of that and uh, you can see folks as they're coming in there to the RV resort just really nice how everything is is really nicely decorated one of the uh, additions that you'll see here also off to the right is the the pick a, pick a ball uh, court. They were building that last time that we were here um, and they did a nice job with it. Um, you know, I, we don't play that. So I, as far as um, comparing that to other pickleball courts, I can't really tell you if it's, if it's better or worse or not as nice, but uh, it seems like a nice place. So. All right, so we're gonna walk through the lobby here. Um, one of the jokes between Chrissy and I is like, it is absolutely non-stop Jimmy Buffett uh, music. And if I could um, say like, that would be something I'd be a little bit critical of. I won't talk about it too much because we're walking through the lobby here. As we go down, the lobby is super nice. Um, just every, all the decorations, we enjoy it because there's a lot of Airstream um, things, you know, here on the wall. As you can see the art there is Airstream. And then, uh, actually, let me make a left turn and go down these stairs. When you go down the stairs here, uh, there's a lot of activities that you can do. Uh, there's a billiards, billiards room as well. I need to speak up a little bit so you can hear me better. But we're making our way to the Lazy River, which is where we spent the majority of our time. Um, foosball there. We have a uh, arcade over here, which is pretty well stocked with some some nice games in there as you can see very cool all right we'll make our way around now they did um, have some live music like the night before last and we'd actually went in, out in the town looking for live music and we were kind of surprised to come back after fighting with the trolley and i'll tell you about that before we get done here um, we came back that wasn't on the schedule and then last night on the schedule was actually live entertainment but then uh, it was it was a no-show so uh, it was kind of like flip-flop <laughs> um, we had entertainment the night that we didn't expect entertainment live entertainment to be out here in the event lawn and then the night before um, we did have it so I might have just said that wrong but it's been a little bit of a relaxing day so um, you know, we've been out in the sun quite a bit. And, uh, but yeah, here's the lazy river that you can see. 
and uh, super relaxing. They have a, a little bar out here that you can get some good margaritas also at. Right here, as you can see it. Yeah, pretty nice. Small, pretty small overall, um, comparably to maybe some of the ones that you've seen in the past. You can also access the Lazy River via the main drive here, and we wanted to walk through the lobby, and there's uh, Chrissy up there. But you can park your golf cart there, so that parking there that you just seen was the golf cart parking. Um, so one of the things here in the Pigeon Forge area that uh, we had never taken advantage of and really thought you know that we needed to was the trolley system um, that goes out into town and it's definitely priced accordingly it's it's like basically you board the trolley and it's a dollar when you board um, they do not accept anything but dollar bills so if you got a 50 you're out of luck you might as well step back off now we waited only about 15 minutes and so hopefully um, let me just tell you like it was not a good experience so let me just tell you that right off the bat but let me explain why it wasn't. So we waited like 15 minutes and the trolley boards up here pass, this is what you'll see when you come up the hill, past the main entrance of the resort, right there at the camp store, which is past that uh, Ram uh, pickup truck up there, past the um, SUV off to the right, that's the camp store right by the pool. And so, when it showed up 15 minutes later, and it's about a 45 minute cycle to give and take, we figured it right, but then we got on, and at least the driver was nice enough. He's like, we only had a dollar, and then at 50, and he's like, ah, don't worry about it, just go ahead and get on, because he knew he was gonna be dropping us off like literally two blocks down the road. And then you have to catch a different trolley to go to where we wanted to go, which is a common stop around here, which is called the island. We never made it there because we actually got to the second stop where we were supposed to pick up our other uh, trolley and it was it was 45 minutes at that point in time so we'd been basically on the road for like an hour already uh, waiting on the trolley system so I'll just say like as far as the trolley system goes unless you have no transportation whatsoever uh, Ubers are not really available in this area uh, definitely just drive your car just go out in traffic uh, deal with the traffic. Do not even bother uh, with the trolley system because you will be way prolonged in your evening and who knows what time you'll be able to get back. So yeah, it's a, in my opinion, um, trolley system is a huge fail. So don't even bother. We, we ended up just leaving the trolley stop and walking back home, back here to the campground. So if that tells you anything about the trolley system. So, all right, well, um, Chrissy, did you have anything you wanted to add? We talked about the food, campground. I told him about the trolley system. Um, anything else? Nothing else. No, Came all right. Trip. Yeah, Recommend it was, it. It, yeah, definitely a good trip. So I'll flip this around here. Actually, I want to spin around and we hit it once and get it to spin it around. Off. Yep, so, all right, well, appreciate everybody watching uh, this latest episode of up in the airstream dot or up in the air dot stream so trying to get used to that name hopefully this was helpful for you um, like I said if you want to know what the other spots the other locations look like definitely check out our video from last year and make sure to subscribe and like this video and put any any comments that you have or maybe experiences that you had in the comments section and we appreciate everybody watching take care be safe